world in these last days. He wants you to have your needs met. He wants you to have good stuff. He wants you to have a good car. He wants you to have good clothes. He wants you to have a good roof over your head. God wants that for you because you're his children. Amen. Wouldn't you want that for your children in the natural? Yes, How much yes. more would God want it for his children? He wants you to have those things. I remember so many times, though, when, when we, I mean, we didn't have nothing at times. You remember we didn't have nothing? Man, you remember when we struggled just to give our kids lunch every day, day by day? With the devil to have to do without lunch? You remember when we couldn't even buy groceries for the whole year? We had to buy it day by day? And there's not one time they ever missed a meal? Amen. We never went to the grocery store and bought a week's groceries or a month's groceries or two weeks' groceries. We bought it day by day. Give us this day our daily bread. And we did that for a solid year right after I started preaching full time. And God blessed us and we never missed one meal. Never went hungry one time. Our God is faithful. This thing Amen. is not no phony thing. This thing is not just a religious idea. This is a reality because God is real. He's alive. He wants to bless us that we might help the gospel and we might help our neighbor and we might help somebody else that we see is in trouble and we're able to do something for them. But if we just barely get enough to survive on, we can't help nobody much. It's his will. Amen. Beloved, I wish above all things that you might prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. It's the Lord God that gives the power to get well that his covenant might be established. Now, he made two little, uh, right there, if you read that chapter of Deuteronomy 8 and 18, he made a couple of things he said we don't need to do. He said, remember him, don't turn to idols. If you want him to bless you and prosper you in that way, he said, remember him and don't turn to idols. I'm using my words there, just read it yourself, you want to. Remember him and don't turn to idols. Don't make money your idol. Don't make any kind of material position, your idol. Amen. Don't make people your idols. God amen. is who we look to. Can somebody amen. say amen? amen. And, and if we want him to bless us like that, we got to look to him. We can't have idols. I have no idols. I have people I appreciate, but I have nobody I idolize. I, I idolize God. He's not an idol. He's a real God. That's what I'm saying. But he's the only one I look to. Amen. And he said, uh, remember, don't turn to idols. Remember God. Obey his voice. Obey his voice. Ain't that a key? Somebody said, well, I don't know his voice, brother. Listen, I've never heard him speak audibly. But when we're really sincere with God, it's something inside us. Mm -hmm. And it don't go away. Mm -hmm. And he'll start dealing with you. You need to do this. You need to don't do this. You need to do this. Mm -hmm. And it won't go away. And he'll keep on. And it's inside. It's not what you call a real audible voice all the time. It can be. God can do anything. But it's a strong feeling you have inside. And you felt, God wants me to do this. Or God don't want me to do that. But we need to obey his voice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this with you. So if you obey his voice, he said he would give you power to get well. If you obey his voice. If you don't turn to idols. I was in Washington. Well, I was first in Vincennes, Indiana. Remember that? I had a big tent up in Vincennes, Indiana. Amen. And had a tent revival. And it was so hot. You know, everybody think all that stuff is fun. That is labor. That is work. It was so hot that summer that, boy, I about melted in that tent. I mean, sweat was dropping down off my fingers and my feet, running down in my boots. I mean, I sloshed it around on the platform. I mean, it got so hot that summer that the asphalt and the highways and the interstates warped and cracked mm -hmm. in many of the big cities that summer. I believe it was in 76 or 77. But the thing about it is this. I'm in there in this tent revival, and I see this preacher. I don't know him. But I asked somebody about him. So he's got a little church in Washington, Indiana. That's the town over there. And I'm looking at him. He don't want to say nothing to me. We're there for a week and a half or two weeks, I think. About two weeks. And we're about two weeks. And he don't want to say nothing to me. He's in service every night. I found out he's a pastor. He's over there in Washington. But I'll, one day God told me. He said, he's going to ask you to come to Washington. He said, you go. Okay. Well, he told me, he said, he's going to ask you to come bring your tent to Washington. Go. The very last night when the service was about over, the tent revival was over, the last service, he stood up in the tent. 
He said, Brother, I want to invite you to Washington to bring Amen. you to it. God done told me he's going to do it. I said, I'll be there. I said, I've got a couple more things i got to do. i got to go to, uh, well, we're to Tallahoma, Tennessee. We've got to go to Tallahoma, Tennessee, and we've got to go to Homo, then we'll come good. We'll be back this way. But we'll be back just as quick as we can get back. God done told me to go. Okay. Okay, here comes the pastor to support that revival right there. It's Jess Pollock. He said, Brother Ace, I heard that, I heard that Jack and Badgie come to Washington. said, oh, you don't need to go there. You don't need to go there. He said, man, said them people won't give you nothing. He said, we have to take and help them uh, with their light power bill almost every month. They can't hardly pay their power bill. So I'm afraid your little kids are going to go hungry. They're going to get you up there and you ain't going to be able to get nothing. I mean, he's t this is a pastor. Amen. Well, I'm worried about you going, Brother Ray. I don't think you ought to go. I said, God told me to go. Amen. I'm going. That's right. <laughs> And I'm going. And he just kept on, kept on. You know, I'm worried to death about your little kids and all that kind of stuff. I said, God told me to come, go, I'm going. Mm -hmm. Well, we made it. We done mm -hmm. our revivals in, in Tallahoma, Tennessee, in our hometown of Hornwall. Then we went that way. When we got there, we had two vehicle, vehicles. Had a big truck. And I was driving it. Linda was driving the what, station wagon with a camper behind it. Mm -hmm. And we we made it up to this park. They've got this real nice park. It's, uh, it's, uh, Washington City Park, that one. Yeah. Beautiful place. I mean, and they got uh, approved that we could put the tent up there for a tent revival. So we got onto the park. We got there the next morning. We didn't have, I, I say we had a couple of cans of soup. Linda said we had a thing of blackberries. I don't know how we got so twisted up there. I had a can of blackberries. Is that all we had in the cup? Yep. I yeah. thought we had a couple of cans of soup. Might have, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we didn't have nothing. We pulled on that park. We didn't have no more money. We took our money and bring both vehicles up there that far and everything and set up. And then we pulled up there. The next morning, I'm out there looking for a spot to put the tin up and everything. And, and all of a sudden, station wagon pulls up. Amen. I'm up there. I, I said, I holler at him. I said, How y'all doing? You know, I noticed it was some ladies, you know, from that church because they'd sat with Jack and I think his wife and maybe his, her sister or whatever. I know it was him. I said, how are they? I said, we're doing great. Brother Ray said, we feel like we need to bring you some food. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I said, hey, we ain't got nothing to eat. You know, we just trust in God, but we hadn't missed no meal. We just want to. Oh, well, brother, we stopped and ate, didn't we? We yeah. never missed a meal. But I said, just put it in the camper. I said, I'm up here, you know, doing this. I said, I can't come out right now. I said, just go ahead and put it in the mm -hmm. camper. Well, they put it on the camper, and then they drove away, and they left. I went down. I couldn't even open my door. Man, the camp, the, 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 everything in there was full of food. The floor was full of food. The <laughs> tables, the countertops were full Amen. of food. I mean, it was, they packed that little camper out. Amen. 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 Because, you know, I, I heard God's voice. God said he's going to ask you to come. He said, you go. Amen. And because I did that, God made sure my needs were supplied. Amen. And when I left there, this is honest God truth. We stood there two weeks. I needed some tires on my camper. That already got a little dry rotted. I could get some more brakes on them. They're still holding up, but they were getting rough. And I really needed some. Hadn't got none yet. But when I left there, I had new tires on my camper. Mm. When I left there, I had more money in my pocket than I had when I preached in Vincennes and that guy was so yeah. worried about how they were going to do me so bad and I was going to go hungry and all that stuff. I had more money in my pocket. I had new tires on my camper and God had blessed and we'd had a great revival and things that took place. Why? Because God spoke to me. He's going to stand up. He's going to ask you to go to Washington and you go with him. He said, and, and I did and he became a great friend of mine. He became a great friend, Jack, for many, many, many years. Amen. When we come through that Washington, Indiana, we, we preached in his church. We even a few times stayed in his church. in his church. Remember one time we was coming through, it was late at night, and I called him and said, Jack, I said, we're going to get in a motel for three or four hours. Uh, how about us going there and, and, and sleeping in your church, you know, tonight? And he went and opened it up. We got there, and we had blankets, and we had pillows, and all that kind of stuff. And everything, we slept a few hours, and we got to up on the horn wall about another six hours. But the thing about it is we become friends, and he didn't start wanting me to come preach his little church. It was one room. It, was, it used to be a grocery store, and it was one room that, that, that it had this church in, and three or four benches, and, mm -hmm. a, and a, a pulpit. That's all it had. 
but they had some other petitions and some other rooms. But I'm talking about one room where he had the church. And we started ministering there. You remember that? And then I'd go around and preach, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God would move on me, and I'd say, I'd say, Jack, you got to knock a wall out. Mm -hmm. I said, people are coming. I said, I see it in the vision. People are coming to this church. You're going to have some new people coming. You're going to have to have more room. You've got to knock a wall out. I'd go back a couple months later. He'd have a wall knocked out. They had it building. And I'd look at it, and I'd say, you have to knock another wall out. Mm -hmm. and he, I said, to see more people coming. He knocked another wall out. For it was all over, every wall there was knocked out. Amen. They just had one great big room. Amen. And they had it packed out and God was moving. Amen. God was moving because he invited me to come. I went and obeyed him. And then he, they blessed us like they blessed us. They got a whole lot more than they ever, they ever, ever gave. I got finished this. Then after we couldn't get no more room in that store, everything except the bathroom was knocked out in the room. I said, I see, I see a, a church building. I said, you, you're going to build a church. Next thing I know, I went back to Washington. I mean, this is over a few years. I went back to Washington one day, and I, they got these little strings, and these, you know how you do when you're marking off territory and something to build? Mm -hmm. They're out there in the, the lot right next to the store building. They were renting. They didn't even own it. They just renting it. And they had it marked off, and they didn't even own it. Is that crazy? No, that's faith. Mm -hmm. That's faith. Amen. They went and marked that thing off and had the strings run to the, the church they're going to build on property they didn't even own. Yeah. It. Amen. That's what you put works for your faith. But you know what? They bought it. They bought the land. Amen. Two years later, they had a church erected right there next to it and had the store tied into it as a classroom and had a nice church, Amen. nursery, Amen. office, sanctuary. And they only owed, they had it paid for, except a few bucks. I think it was 120 dollars for some two before. And everything else was paid for. Had a big sign they donated from like a McDonald's or something. And they had it out there as a lighted sign. They had it fixed up for the church sign. It was nice. It looked as fancy as anything you ever seen. Had a nursery. Had an office. Had a big sanctuary that would seat 200. And I told them, I said, God's going to fill it up. I'm just telling you, that's what God can do. God can Amen. prosper you, but he, but he ain't going to prosper us unless we step out, unless we just do what he tells us to do. You know, they helped me all them years. Man, they didn't have a lot of money. I went one time in there, and they had a big old gallon jug of change. And there was just, there's people just working, people just poor people. They weren't really wealthy people. And I said, what's that about? And they said, this is for you, Brother Ray. They had been saving their change for him, and they handed me a gallon of change. I felt bad about taking it. But I did. Because they give it. Man. And God will bless them for giving it. You, if I believe that, I shouldn't feel bad about taking it. God's going to bless them a lot more. They had their homecoming. Not homecoming, but what was that? Dedication. 200 people packed it out. Couldn't hold no more. 200 people packed it out. And they went from just a matter of probably four or five years from that one little room in that store mm. building with three or four benches and a little mm. pulpit, amen, to having a brand new church built, owning the property, owning the store, owning the church without any debt, no amen. mortgage, amen. no nothing, amen. Yes, God can prosper you. Yes, he can. And when he prospers us, let's make sure. I'm, I'm believing for prosperity. I've just been thinking lately, listen, I think I'm going to get me a new car. And I said, no. Too many headaches in that. I've been thinking about it lately. I ain't never had a new car in my life. Yeah, but I never really it. cared about it. I really don't care about it. No more I used to because then I could ride around with Porter. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I used to try looking for it, but God took a lot of that out of me. <laughs> a whole lot of that. He let the air out of yourself. Boy, he can do it. Oh man, not Johnny. I walk in them churches. I have three pieces, uh, piece of uh, pinstripe suit on and a briefcase. I'm down the road. <laughs> I'm down to business. I never had a new car, but I have a pretty nice one. I have it shined up, you know. <laughs> I kind of say, I'm, I'm a professional, man. <laughs> it didn't shine up. It parked down the road. Well, a couple of times I do that. Mm -hmm. I bought. I had a Cadillac one time, and it was tore in the shop. And uh, I had to borrow her mama's car. Oh, it was her mama's car was awful. I drove, I drove all the way to Chicago in that car. 
I mean, it looked rough. <laughs> so, I go to this pretty fancy church, you know, and it's, uh, it's the one with the basement and the balcony and all that stuff. And I park way down in the parking lot, way down there. <laughs> and I walk up. <laughs> I'm ashamed to see get out of that car. <laughs> when I got there, you know, God's got a way to take the pride out of you. Yeah, I, I thought I was getting by with something. And I think about the third night there, this little boy was standing there and he's talking to one of the guys. He's, he says, is that his car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking down the I said, is that his car? He said, no, he's got a Cadillac at home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was true. But it was humiliating having to drive that wreck of a car up there. But it got me there and it got me back. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. But you know what? There's been times, you know, uh, I had a pretty, pretty nice ride. And there were times I had a rough ride. But God always made a way. But I ain't, I ain't been thinking about a new car just to be flashy. I've been thinking a new car for various reasons. Uh, I had no mechanic bills for a while. They'd be have a warranty on it. That's the same. I, mean, I could have had a lot of money on this car. And I would have mechanic bills, and my, my mileage would be about twice as good. So maybe I could even come out by having ones. I'm, I'm thinking about that. But you know what? The reason I didn't come, I'm going to close this if I can. The reason I didn't come last Sunday night is because I didn't feel, I felt that there was something wrong. I shouldn't come. I didn't know where it was lending or not. She slept about all day long. I know she was up to coming. But it wasn't just that. I felt something went right. So if I went on to the last I could, I think I told Sister Joyce, I'll, I'll let you know something about 2 o'clock, 2 or 3 o'clock for sure. I just didn't feel good about it. Well, I didn't know exactly what it was exactly. I didn't know where it was landing. She wasn't able to go. I didn't want to leave her, you know, at that moment because she'd been asleep about all day. I didn't know what it was for sure. I just didn't feel good. So then, when I went to get a, later on, we went to get a, a burger. We started home, and when we barely made it home, I'm telling me the motor Amen. started running like a wheat thrasher. It started running hot. I mean, it was, I barely got home. Barely, I thought it was going, you know, I pushed it a little bit because I wanted to get there and I have to get a record and go through all that kind of stuff. Barely got home. And so if I'd have been, if I'd have made it over this way, tried to come this direction, I'd have, I'd have broke down halfway. I would have never made it here because when we went to get that hamburger, we wasn't about three or four miles. 24. We went about three or four miles, you know, there and back from my house, and we barely made it back there. So if we started this week, it would cause us a whole lot more trouble mm. than it did. Got back home, I found out, well, the water leaked out of it. I've been checking water pretty often, but somehow... Did you let that clock work every morning? Yeah, I could check it. Not every morning. I'd, I'd miss you that. But every bit of water was out of it. I put three and a half gallons of water in that thing. Mm. Then the next morning, I put some stop leak in it. Sometimes that'll help, sometimes it won't. Mm -hmm. I have had them stop it, and I've had them not stop it. So it seems like it's been doing okay. Now I've been checking every morning, just a little bit low, but not much, and everything. But uh, I, we got we to listen to God. If we start feeling something ain't right in here, mm -hmm. we got to go with that. We can't, we can't take and just push aside and just That's override right. that. We've got to go mm -hmm. because God leads us by his spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. We are led by the spirit of God. And if I'd have tried to override that and come anyway, then I'd have probably broke down a long time before I got here. And then I'd have had to probably, I might even blow the engine if I tried to push it too hard and yeah. get to the next exit or get where I can be, get off the road safely. I might have blown the engine. And I'd have had to get a wrecker and I'd had to do this and mm -hmm. had to get away back home. Because they won't let you ride in the records no more, Harley. Maybe they've changed now if they wouldn't when it's real bad. Mm -hmm. And I do it on all of this struggle. And I still wouldn't make it. So God is able to move on us and, show, and, and speak to us and tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. And if we want him to bless us, we're going to have to do that. Obey his voice. Do what he tells us to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and when he blesses us, God wants your needs supplied abundantly. He wants your needs supplied but make sure when you see a need out there and God tugs at your heart, meet that need. Meet that need. I'm not just talking about an offering, having church service. I'm talking about anytime. Anytime you, there, you see a need and God tugs at your heart, then you obey that because you're never going to lose. God's word says you can't lose. He said he's going to bless you a lot more than anything that you give. He's going to give you a lot more back. And if we believe that, why would we hate to do it if we really believe that? We know his word so he's going to bless us with a lot more than what we've done. Then why would we care to do it? It's because we have to fight that devil. He tries to make us believe, oh, 
I don't know. You know, I don't know if God will do that. If God said he would do it, he'll do it. Mm. I've Man. seen it. I've seen him too many times. He'll do it. Mm. We went through. <laughs> We're going to ask you, I mean, if anybody's got a question, I don't know everything. If I know it, I'll, I'll try to answer it. But if I don't know it, I'll say, well, we'll, we'll try to find it. But many, many times I've talked about how that we had, what, seven children in the home at one time. Your mother was with us a lot. And me and you, ten people in one house. And it was not a time, not a time that we ever missed a meal. Not much of those fasting. And we need to do more of that. And also in that 50 year period of time, our electricity was only cut off once for two hours. Amen. One time in for two hours. And we live by faith sometimes day by day and Amen. brought food day by day. Amen. And I guess day I mean day by day. And God always come through. Every time. He never failed. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. And he's the same God right now as he was then. We just gotta believe in him and believe what he said so. Amen. 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 We love the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I, I don't I hope I put it together right. I've got so much on my heart. And Lord, I I know that sometimes when people start getting a, a lot of material things or a lot of money, God, they seem to take and just want to consume it on their own lust. But Lord, that ain't that ain't your plan. Your plan is for us to meet have our needs met abundantly and then help others. And that is your plan and get the gospel out and help the poor and help the orphans and the widows and help the people that's hungry that don't have food to eat. And Lord, help them, God. That is your plan. That is your will for us to receive wealth or prosperity. Now help us to do the right thing and we'll just put the mothers in your hands. You deal with them as you see fit. You see their hearts. Lord, just help us to do it right. We love you. We know your word is so. It's forever settled in heaven. It cannot be altered, Lord. You said it. You will bring it to pass. Let faith rise up in our hearts like never before. And let us go forth and not have fear because you said you would supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. And you can make a way where there seemeth to be no way. You are the way. You are the yes. truth. You're the life, Lord. And you didn't say you would just bless us when everything was just great. You said you would bless us in the time of famine. You said you would bless us in the year of famine. You said you would bless us when it seems like everything is coming unglued. You can still bless us and you can make a way. And we're looking to you in these last days like never before. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.